Lucina Russell and I'm the Arts Officer for Kildare County Council. You're very welcome to this information session on how to apply for grants with the Arts and Cultural Services in Kildare County Council. Today we're going to look at a range of schemes um, that are funded by Kildare Arts Service under Kildare Creative Ireland Programme, the Shortgrass Films Initiative and the Decade of Commemorations. And just to emphasise that the deadline for the grants is the 18th of March, 12 noon. And as usual, we don't accept late applications. So it's very important that you uh, get your application in early. So I'll just get started here. And just to say that the image here on the right hand side is an image from the art strategy um, that we have at the moment. And the image um, is part of a project that an artist called Sheena Malone had. Um, and we, we used this image with her permission on the cover of the strategy. And it was actually a project that was developed in Allen Wood and it was uh, funded through the Arts Act grant scheme a number of years ago. Uh, and we have lots of projects that were funded that you can maybe go to our social media and to our websites to have a look at some of the projects that we funded in the past. Um, so I'm just going to get started and go through the range of grants that we have available. You don't need to write everything down. Like I said, you'll be able to refer back to this when it's recorded, uh, but also all of the information about the grants is on the online system as well. So the information is all there. So just first, uh, and I'm, so I'm going to try and break it down that you're not going to be too uh, bamboozled with information. And I'm going to start first with the range of grants that, that the art service coordinate. And just to put a definition on what the arts is, we use the arts, um, we define them under the Arts Act 2003, meaning any creative or interpretive expression, whether traditional or contemporary in whatever form, and includes in particular visual arts, theatre, literature, music, dance, opera, film, circus and architecture, and includes any medium when used for those purposes. So you can see that that definition is very broad um, and it allows for artists to work across mediums. So you might have a theatre practitioner who also works in dance or somebody who's working in literature who also works in visual arts. And we allow for that within the grants. So this is the first tranche of grants that I'm going to talk about today and the Arts Act grant, it's, uh, that's the main, I suppose you could call that the catch-all grant and it probably will be the one that most of you are interested in. So the type of, of people or individuals or groups who apply for that, um, it can be professional artists. And when I say artists, I mean artists in all art form areas. So that could be a visual artist, a dancer, an architect, a theatre practitioner, a filmmaker. Uh, and all of the uh, arts that were listed on the, under the definition on the previous slide. Uh, professional artists tend to apply for things like development money, so maybe to make a new play um, for um, or some, some sort of body of work. And um, it's development money uh, or realisation money, so maybe to get an exhibition um, completed and get it ready for display. Uh, you can also apply for things like materials and equipment. So that could be maybe a painter applying for paint or maybe camera equipment. Um, so it really just depends, maybe a musician applying for funding towards buying a new instrument or a piece of equipment for that. Um, it also, uh, we invite applications from community groups. So that could be a community group that wants to engage the services of an artist. Uh, and it also involved community uh, artists. Um, sorry, so any community arts collective, so maybe like a visual arts collective, for example. Um, so, and there's further information about each of these schemes on the website about exactly what it covers. Um, so again, the, those, we say musical societies, for example, uh, we, we prefer, rather than somebody applying for the overall cost of their annual play, for example, we would prefer to see applications for things like to have a guest director to come in or maybe um, some professional mentoring, something that just might raise the standard of the work. Uh, would be what we're most interested with, maybe community groups or maybe amateur drama, musical societies. Um, but I suppose we deliver, deliberately leave it open as we do with a lot, lot of the grants to allow you to interpret to see if, it, if to, 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 you should try and fit it to fit your project to the scheme itself. Um, and I'm actually going to go through in the second part of the application, I'm actually going to through, go through an Arts Act grant application um, so that we'll be able to chat about it a little more then as well. The second scheme then is the Artists and Schools Residency Bursary Award. And that's an award of two and a half thousand euro for an artist, again, across art form to work in a school, primary or secondary in County Kildare. 
And uh, in, on that application, the artist and school need to apply together. So it's not enough for a school to say we want to work with a dancer or a theatre practitioner. They need to name the person and uh, the application should read that there has been a conversation between the school and the artist and that they're uh, applying for this together. Um, and I mentioned that the award for that is uh, two and a half thousand euro. And in recent years, we've awarded between four and five awards. Um, just to say this year, obviously we're in a COVID climate. I'm going to try not mention that too much today, but just to say that with all of these grants, we will allow flexibility for delivery. So if time frame changes or the format of delivery changes, we will allow for that. But but your your application should also address it if it is something that is going to require some engagement with a community group or some sort of a public access. The third scheme that we have here is the Artistic Entrepreneur Bursary Award, and that's with uh, the Kildare Local Enterprise uh, Office. And that's an award of €1,500 Euro, um, to develop uh, an idea. It can be an idea or a service, and I suppose it tends to be something that wouldn't really fit under the Arts Act grant. It might have more of a... I suppose either a service or a product. So for example, it might be a jewellery designer or it could be a service that you want to maybe develop um, a theatre school for working with children. And the award for that is 1500 euro and the Leo office provides mentoring to the value of a thousand euro with that as well. And I know in recent years, all of the applicants, regardless of whether they got the bursary or not, got some mentoring from Leo as well. So that's a good one if you have sort of a a business idea. We, we don't fund commercial activity, but we want to try and encourage that entrepreneurship as well. Um, there is only one award in, in that each year. The Dennis O'Driscoll Literary Bursary Award, we have two awards in that. The first one is €1,500 Euro for an emerging writer, and the second one is for a professional writer, and that award is for €2,000. Euro. And they're both to develop um, a body of work in literature. Um, just one award in, in that category for those. Um, and they need to just um, outline a specific body of work that the money would go towards. The Drama League of Ireland Summer School, every year we award a number of bursaries for um, theatre practitioners from Kildare to attend a summer school. Um, it's been running for the last number of years um, in Limerick, in UL. We are hoping it's going to go ahead and we're assuming that it will. Uh, so there's two bursary awards to attend the summer school, including uh, the fees and accommodation but if it doesn't happen in the room this year um, I believe they're running online programs for recipients so if you're interested in that I'd say still apply and we, we'll always allow flexibility um, particularly at this time um, to ensure that the the commitment to the award is is honoured. The next one is the Emerging Visual Artist Solo Exhibition Award and that is an award of two and a half thousand euro and that is in association with Riverbank Art Centre in Newbridge. And that is for, um, for a solo show of work to be developed uh, for display in the gallery. As well as the cash uh, award, there is also uh, support provided by the Art Centre in terms of technical, marketing, uh, and just general guidance around the exhibition. And recipients have said that th while, while the uh, grant aid is, is welcome, that they uh, really appreciated the other supports like the technical support, like to get somebody to hang your exhibition professionally and all of the marketing supports that maybe people have only ever done it by themselves. Um, we're deliberately vague on what emerging means. Um, and I suppose with the Dennis O'Driscoll Literary Bursary Award about how you define yourself as an emerging writer, you don't have to be um, a certain age to do that. We're talking about emerging in terms of your practice. So, um, you could be an older artist, but in terms of where you're at the stage of development you are at, you consider yourself emerging. Um, the next one then is executive coaching for creative professionals. And um, Matthew Raleigh, who runs this coaching, actually um, was a recipient of the Artistic Entrepreneur Bursary Award a few years ago. So he wanted to create this service to develop executive coaching for creative professionals. So it's nice to think that it's come full circle and that, that uh, Matthew is offering this executive coaching. So that's one-to-one -one where Matthew would talk to you about your practice. And again, we got really good feedback on that this year. A lot of artists working in many um, areas, um, you know, and, and just to try and maybe give some focus and to just reflect on your practice and where you want to go. Um, so the award of those, I think they're to the value of 1500 euro and a number of awards were made um, in recent years. The next one is a local publishing award. And we set this one up because some of the applications we're getting 
fell between the stools in terms of literature. So they might not necessarily have been a creative writing slant on them. So for example, last year we funded a project about Megging, which is horseshoe throwing. Um, we funded projects maybe around the GAA, around local history, um, and we, we considered them very worthy. So that's why we set up this award. So each year we have an award of two awards of 650 euro towards a local publication. We have also funded um, maybe creative writing groups as well, but it's quite broad. The Recording Bursary Award at Platform 4 Recording Studio. It's a, an award of, for three days recording at our studio in League Slip. And again, that may be COVID dependent exactly how that will happen but again we will honor the commitment if uh, that has to be delayed uh, but we also have the facility in Lakeslip but we also have um, a mobile unit as well so uh, you work there for, with our, our sound technician for three days it could be a singer songwriter who wants to record an album it could be a band uh, but in the past we've funded choirs and we've also funded um writers who wanted to record um, some RL work as well. But with all of these, we try to allow as much flexibility as possible. So it's up to you to see if your, if your project fits the scheme. Um, a new award for last year was the Research and Thinking Bursary Award. So that's an award of 1,700 euro uh, for an artist to, 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 to research and think. Uh, but with that, to work with a mentor as well. And you need to assign a mentor and there's a fee for the mentor of 500 euro with that. And a bit like the um, emerging, sorry, the artists in schools, the mentor needs to be named, the artist, you know, there needs to be a clear plan set out between the two collaborators in the application. The Tyrone Guthrie Centre uh, Residency Bursary Award, that's an artist's workplace in Monaghan. And each year we award um, a bursary to go there well, we, we usually say that we are going to award two awards of two weeks, but it often works out that it's four awards of one week because it's one of our um, uh, one of our schemes that gets the most number of applications. And um, so that's basically to go and work and work amongst other artists and um, the feedback again from that to just work with other people and maybe push you in a direction that you didn't necessarily think you were going to go has been really good. And again, if, if that has to be delayed for COVID reasons this year, um, we'll honour that. The Youth Arts Residency Bursary Award um, is for a group. It could be like a, a youth club, a Faroiga, um, any type of youth project uh, that has some sort of formal status or gathering. Um, and that scheme is to work with an artist. Again, it could be an artist in any art form area. And like the emerging artist, or sorry, the... Um, Artists and Schools Award, the, the artist and the youth project need to put in a joint application. And that award is for 50 or sorry, 2,500 euro as well. So they're the first tranche of grants that the art service have been delivering um, over the last number of years. But there's, so I just left those on their own. And then we have some other new schemes as well that I'm going to go through. Before that, I'm just going to go through some statistics because this is probably our most asked questions is how much money do we give? So I've just pulled out some stats there from the last two years. Um, so you can see the total award under the Arts Act. That's that catch-all grant that I mentioned at the start. So last year we gave um, almost 44,000 euro just up from um, nearly 40,000 a year previously. And then all of the other schemes I mentioned on the previous slide, um, 39,350. So you can see they were awarded 82, nearly 83,000 euro in the last two years. And um, the average grant last year was 739. That was up a little bit from the previous year, 579. And the reason for that is that we had less applications last year, just because our deadline coincided with the first COVID lockdown, a number of applications were withdrawn or projects that just couldn't be realised because they just didn't, they weren't adapted for uh, delivering uh, delivery at the time. Um, but still in all the statistics, it's a good indication as to what we gave. The minimum grants of 200 euro, that could be somebody who applied for, maybe look, wants to buy a new camera and the camera costs 300 euro. So they've got a contribution towards that. It's not that somebody applied for, 1800 euro and we only gave them 200 but sometimes you can make your grant ineligible so for example if you are um an art group and you want to have a launch and you're applying to us for um maybe you're going to get a master class with some professional artist but and you also want to have an exhibition and you're going to have a cheese and wine launch uh, like we don't fund alcohol uh with launches so sometimes there's parts of your 
um, requests that we just don't, we say, well, we can't fund that element of it. And sometimes the requests are modest. So if you're only asking for a small amount of money, then you know, you're know you not going to get offered more than you've asked for. And you can see that the maximum award in the last two years was 1,800 euro. Um, and so the number of applications, I suppose 85, um, that would be pretty consistent. Last year, like I said, down a little bit. Um, and not everybody gets an award. It is competitive. Um, but having said that, some people apply for more than one award. So if you've applied for three different schemes, it's unlikely you're going to get um, um, awards in more than one. You might, but it's unlikely. Uh, it, we are oversubscribed for all of our schemes. Um, so uh, just to bear that in mind. Uh, but you're welcome to apply for as many schemes as you want. Um, and so, but this year we're actually setting the maximum award as 2,500 euro. Um, whether we'll actually award that maximum award, I don't know. It depends very much on the number of applications that we get. Okay, so new for this year then, we have uh, two awards under the Decade of Commemorations programme. So this is part of a national programme um, marking the decade of centenaries from 1921 to 1923. And uh, the department have um, launched a new initiative uh, for artistic and creative endeavors. So um, we're rolling this out under that. So we're going to have at least one award of 7,500 euro. And we'll, we'll also have a short grass film commission award of 12,500 euro. Uh, and they need to have some sort of a Kildare, Kildare focus. Um, there is a lot of information on what it covers, what, what might be, uh, developed um, under the application form on the on the website as well. But it, it, it may be political themes, but could also look at the social, economic and cultural um, events of the time. So and then um, so the short grass film awards um, each year, we offer a number of awards for 1500 euro and that's for filmmakers from Kildare uh, for awards of 1500 euro. Um, and they may end up with finished films, or again, it could be development money to develop an idea. Uh, but it needs, um, they, we, we funded an, a number of them last year. We had a short grass film festival um, in early March. Um, so to date, I think we've we funded about 34 films over the last decade or so. And a lot of that development money did lead to um, some fabulous projects, uh, mostly short films. Uh, and they're for filmmakers from Kildare. The next two commissions, uh, the Short Grass uh, Award of 12,500, uh, that's open to anybody. You don't have to be from or living in Kildare. And the, the reason we developed this initiative really is to promote the county um, as a film friendly county and to encourage filmmakers to come to Kildare. I've already mentioned the Decade of Commemorations Short Film Commission of 12,500. Um, and again, that's open to all filmmakers, so not from Kildare, but there needs to be some sort of a Kildare link and it needs to be shot in the county. So moving on to the next round of grants, uh, the Creative Ireland grants. Um, so we have um, uh, quite a, a substantial award here, and this isn't just limited to the arts. Um, so this is open to creative industries, heritage and Irish language. Uh, I suppose the main difference between this and the Arts Act grant is that there needs to be some sort of a public engagement or interface. So they tend to be collaborative projects um, that maybe work alongside other people or that there's going to be some sort of seminar or presentation or exhibition. Um, but again, it's, it's quite broad. And um, if you want some more information on what we have funded under Creative Ireland, if you have a look at the Creative Ireland Kildare website, quite a uh, all of our projects actually are, are in the last number of years are listed there and you'll see how diverse they are. Um, so we're looking at themes from individuals or groups around well-being, sense of place, heritage, STEAM, Irish language and climate change. Um, and some of those are interchangeable. There may be more than one theme explored as well. Um, but there's a substantial award. Uh, the, the funding here starts from 3,000 to 10,000 euro. Um, and some projects did receive significant funding in the last few years. Uh, but like, I really need to emphasize the public engagement or interface is really important as part of it. And that needs to be very clear in the application. Um, following on from that, then uh, an initiative of Creative Ireland is Cranoon and Oak, which is the National Day of Creativity in Children and Young People. And it's on Saturday, the 12th of June this year. And we're inviting bursary applications to deliver programming for Cranoon and Oak. 
Um, so and the awards are maximum of two thousand euro. Um, it's hard to say um, what life is going to be like in June this year. So uh, we'll invite applications for online, in room, hybrid uh, delivery. Last year, all of the programming was delivered online. And again, if you have a look at Kildare Art Service YouTube, we have all of the online content is listed there. There's a playlist called Cronoon and Oak, and all of the, the online content that we created for Cronoon and Oak is there. Of course, we would like to think we'll have some in the room programming this year, um, but we, we'll wait and see. But if you're interested in that, uh, you need uh, obviously the, the focus needs to be children and young people, and ideally the voice of the children would some way be represented through the um, application and the project. So moving on then to how to apply or what happens next. So as I mentioned this year, we have a new online application. So that's the only way you can apply this year. You have to go through that system. Um, so the deadline, as I mentioned, is the, is the 18th of March and we don't accept late applications. Um, so um, we always get external panels to assess the grants. So, but if there's, for example, a decade of commemorations application comes in, the staff internally in Kildare County Council who deal with decade of commemorations or if there's a heritage element, we talk to the heritage officer if it's art, arts and wellbeing, we talk to um, our person who manages the arts and health programme and they'll just put some comments on it and then the, all the applications are assessed by an independent panel. So usually it's an arts officer from another county and an artist as well. So they make provisional recommendations um, and then the uh, recommendations then they're and, and part of the application form you're asked for your municipal district area uh, the applications are sorted by municipal district so that's the five electoral areas in Kildare and uh, the grants relevant to that electoral area will be formally um, passed by the councillors in that area uh, usually we try to have the assessment finished by the end of March uh, and to get them uh, before the municipal district meetings in April. So hopefully we'll be able to stick to that this year. We're just keen that people will know as soon as possible if they have the grants. Uh, but if you want to know before um, before the, the councils have, council has actually passed the, <coughs> the decisions, we can offer you a provisional decision. So that's saying, well, this is what the panel has recommended, but until they're formally adopted by council, we can't actually um, say that you've definitely been awarded the, the grant. Um, so then when you receive, if you receive the grant, we do need to um, set you up on our system. So you will need to get a bank account or a credit union account, and we will need uh, proof of um, like a, a bank header and some just a, some practical things that we need from you. Uh, but I would say if you're thinking of applying now and you're a small group and you don't have a bank account or a credit union account, I'd say don't rush out and do it now, I'd say, because you may not receive a grant and we will allow some time to get that set up. But ideally, as soon as possible, because there's a lot of admin involved with this. Um, so and then the, the payments are all made electronically. <clears throat> so but sometimes if there's a delay, it's usually down to the like I said, maybe something from your end that there's some maybe setting up a bank account or something like that. And yes, you can get feedback if you're unsuccessful. Um, usually we just try to guide you um, on how, you know, maybe something that you've missed and that you might like to include some extra information the next time around. Uh, but hopefully by attending a session like this, some of those um, issues might have been resolved. Uh, but it can, it can be useful to get feedback as well because sometimes there's other things at play uh, or like, for example, I mentioned earlier that maybe if your project is really a commercial event, we just don't fund things like that. Um, and I just I usually give the example as well that just say you apply for the visual artist award in Riverbank Arts Centre. And just say Riverbank have their visual arts program for next year. This is hypothetical now. So just say they have four exhibitions involving photography next year and you're a photographer and you apply for that grant. Um, chances are you might not get it because they're looking at the program for the year and so maybe somebody that has something that will be a complete contrast to what's there already in that particular year that one might be the one that fits in with the program so sometimes there can be other nuances around your application so it can be always worth looking for feedback and hopefully we can guide you on how to apply in pre in, in following years and um, so it's just important to take a long-term view get to know us um Sign up for our e-bulletin, uh, follow Kildare Art Service on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 
Um, hopefully in the future you'll be able to attend our events again. Um, I mentioned the e-bulletin. Yeah, and the PPN is a public participation network. So trying to encourage all group applicants that you should, you should register for that. And you will find out all sorts of information about community-based um, initiatives and supports. Uh, so it's, it's a good one to, to register for. Um, and the council are really pushing for all group applications for grants to register with the public participation network. Uh, we love getting acknowledged. Uh, we love seeing our logo on things. Um, it's really good to let councillors in the area know what you're up to. Um, so please, if you have events or you know projects that have been funded, just let them know. Uh, tell us, um, and also just report back. Um, sometimes life gets in the way; projects get delayed. Just keep in touch. Let us know what's going on, and uh, we, we're always flexible with people um, on delivering um, projects. And just to document your work, you know, to get as good photographs or videos or press coverage as best you can, and hold on to it, and hopefully you can use it again for future applications. Now, so this is our new online application system that I'm going to talk you through in a few minutes. So that's there looking very shiny and new. Um, so just, I can't emphasize this enough. The deadline is the 18th of March, the day before St. Patrick's Day, it is a bank holiday. So, um, you know, opening up the form on St. Patrick's Day morning, it's, it's too late. You really need to familiarize yourself with the system. Um, we haven't asked for anything that we haven't asked for before, but just to allow that extra bit of time that maybe Wi-Fi goes down, power cut, all those sorts of things. Um, so uh, there's a month really from today that you have time to apply. So I'd say really urge you just to make sure you leave yourself a plenty of time that it's not ending up in a stressful situation applying for grants. Okay, so I'm just going to go to questions. Um, so I have some questions here in the chat. Now, so somebody here was asking if there's any grants to help upgrade studios um, for supporting artists with online work. Uh, I'd say yes, there is. Um, it would need, I suppose you, you can, something like that, you'd need to just send us quotes and exactly what it is you're looking for. But we do fund equipment. Again, it might be, it depends on if it's a commercial business um, and you're making money from it um, as opposed to a community venture. You just need to look at the um, scope of the arts background. It might be something that maybe the, the uh, artistic entrepreneur um, initiative could fund. Um, although that's, yeah, maybe that would be the best one. Either that or the Arts Act would, would be the one to go. Uh, but certainly to support artists for online presentation of work obviously is is a big thing now and I think we're very keen on things that will improve quality so anything that will upskill improve um experiences for the artists or for the, the audiences as well we're keen on someone is asking here about a musical art project that would, would highlight talent in the area yeah I think you just need to describe how you're going to do that how you're going to find the musicians or is it a uh, as well, we uh, have Kildare has just started a music generation project and Kildare County Council have put sig significant funding into music generation to support um, educate, or music education programs for children and young people. So if it, this is one of those I said that may be looking for feedback, that it, if it's we feel that music generation is doing it anyway, that maybe there might be an overlap there. So that might be something to consider. The tips on the format of the documents needed to be submitted. I'd say bear in mind that the Arts Act grant, we had over 80 applications last year. And uh, you'll see on the, the form that I'm going to go through, uh, the Arts Act grants allows for three um, documents or links to be uploaded. But if every if there's 80 applications and everybody uploads three, that's, um, that's 240 documents that a panel are going to have to look at as well as the application form. So I just say have it really clear and it's easy to read. And if you're going to put up your CV, that the documents say CV and that it's, you know, just nicely presented and easy to read and just visually looks nice. Um, so, you know, so you don't need any anything fancy. I'd say it just shouldn't cost you any money, but well, particularly this year when you don't have to print things out. But I said just it's really easy to read. And for somebody that doesn't know anything about your project, that it's easy to navigate. 
So somebody is asking here, is the platform for recording bursary just awarded to one a single applicant or do you give it multiple applicants? It depends. Uh, we have given up to four awards um, and sometimes we give more. Uh, that's something we usually try to accommodate everybody that applies if we can at all, if we feel the projects are, are worthy of support. Um, okay, somebody else. Um, do all the short film applications have to fit under the centenary teams? No, that's just, there's just one scheme this year, just because um, we have some funding uh, and the decade of centenaries, it's a very particular thing. Um, and I suppose it's a particular moment in Irish history as well. We just thought it'd be nice to see what could come in. Um, so there's one scheme that fits under the centenary theme and the other one can be for, for any theme at all. Um, and they're usually short films. Uh, I know 12 and a half thousand euro might sound like a lot compared to some of the other schemes that we have, but making films costs a lot of money, uh, but it can, you know, there's a wide range of, of um, approaches to it. So there's, there's one that's for the decade of centenaries and there's one is just our regular scheme that we have every year. And then the bursary award again can be for uh, very, very open to, to any, any projects at all. Okay, is there criteria around support materials? Um, okay, so, and somebody's in here, trying to capture full details in 150 words is quite challenging. Um, well, I suppose that's deliberate. Again, I'm just conscious of, I suppose you've got one application, but I'm thinking that we have to look at what the assessment panel has to look at. Um, so I think um, you could look at CVs of the, of the people involved or profiles or biogs. Um, and maybe you can put an outline of the project as well. So you could have, you could, and that can be quite detailed. Um, so you could have press clippings from pre previous projects, uh, or you can put links to social media, websites, um, YouTube clips. Um, so it's very broad. It really depends on the project because we're covering so many art forms, the support material tends to be very diverse. Uh, we do only allow three documents to be uploaded, but that could be that you have one that has um, all the information about the project, including CVs together. And again, we're just looking at it for ease of submission. Um, I actually did the assessment for another county with this online system last year, and some people had up to 12 separate documents, and it was just really, really hard to navigate. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of work probably in tailoring the support material. Um, so there's a little bit of work involved with this this year. So I think, like I said, to just allow time that you can... Um, prepare your support material because it is an important part. The main thing that you want to look at with your support material is that you're showing evidence that you can deliver on whatever it is you said you can do or that you've some sort of a track record. Uh, we are keen to support emerging artists. And um, so you, you could be, you know, a college graduate who has a good idea. So that's not to say we wouldn't support somebody like that as well. But again, you need to just d demonstrate that you have some commitment to it or you have some um, history of working in this area. And somebody asked here, can you apply for the Creative uh, Artistic and Creative Endeavours Award and Creative Ireland? I say, absolutely. I'd say just allow enough time to apply for both. And as I said, there's a number of uh, assessment panels. So we'll have panelists dealing with separate things. So you need to make a distinct application. So don't think just because you put um, support material on one that it's going to carry over to the other. It's not. Because with data protection, we can only share folder A with for one scheme with this panel and then we could have another panel. So it just might be, you might it might be a little bit frustrating. You might have to sort of upload um, similar materials um, for the same projects. Do you include references or letters of support? Yeah, it depends on, on the project. So, but yeah, I'd say anything that is helping to endorse your project. And particularly if you maybe are an emerging artist, so you don't really have a track record, so you can't show your CV with your you know, performances over the last five years or all the exhibitions you've been to. So I think anything that would, um, I suppose, validate your application. Um, and again, some of those, because we have limited the number of documents it can upload. So it might be that there's a CV and maybe a project proposal and a letter of support just to put them all in, in one document. Again, it's just for ease for the uh, panel to, to view them. Um, and somebody asked, do we co-fund project uh, if we were to work at a museum? Um, yeah, you just need to show, if a project is co-funded though, and it's significant funding, you would need to show a letter of support from the other funder as well, uh, or some sort of a commitment to, to show where the money is going to come from. 
Um, and then somebody is asking here about, do you need a business plan for the Entrepreneur Awards? Um, it's probably better if you do. Um, but I think that's something that the Leo office can provide. The local enterprise office will provide assistance with a business plan. So I'd say it could be a, a very drafty one and that maybe at the end of it, you might have um, a more developed one. But you, you do need to have a business idea. Uh, but I think we'd probably be a little bit generous in terms of what the business plan might look at. It just should, should be a clear project. Um, okay, so I think I'll just move on. And like I said, we have some more time at the end. So this is the new um, system. So calderococo.submit.com. Um, so you can see here up the top, there's a homepage. We can have a little look around. You can sign in if you've already been on the site or to register. And uh, you can go in and view the forms. So to register, you need an email address. You're going to be asked for your name and a password. Um, so, and there is another section that I'm not talking about today, which is the profile page. And there is some, again, this is a catch-all for all, some people could be applying for other schemes of the council as well. So, uh, and it does ask information about community groups. Um, not all of the headings are related to you, but just fill them out as best you can. And it does ask, do you have a public participation network number? If you don't have one, just put in zero or just fill in something. Some of the fields are mandatory. And if it asks for chairperson, secretary, treasurer, and if it's just you, you're an individual, you just fill it in, just your name. And then you might have to put in any, any of the boxes that are, you know, prompting you that it's a compulsory field to just put something into it. So um, this is the categories here again, because this is a screenshot. It's not actually live on the website, so I can't scroll down to show you. But you can see the categories here. There's arts, creative Ireland, decade of commemorations. There's community grants and festival grants, which I'm not going to talk about today. They are going to be managed by the um, community department in Kildare County Council, and they'll be advertised shortly. But I'm not even going to mention those today other than to say they're there. And the other category, if you scroll down that little box, there is the uh, film the short grass film projects. Uh, and then each one, you can see we have a nice uh, band there, Crinoon and Oak, Decade of Commemorations. That's just a screenshot of the first page. Um, so you just have a little mosey around, but all of the schemes that I've mentioned in the on the presentation previously are all listed here. Okay, so this is the Arts Act grant scheme form. And I thought I'd just mention this as it might apply to the majority of you here. So again, each but each scheme is laid each uh, yeah, scheme is laid out similarly to this. So there is a description as to what the scheme is intended for, and anyone who's applied previously, this is basically the same text, uh, just in an online version, uh, and there's eligibility for each of the um, of the schemes as well. So that's really important that you have a good read of the description and of the eligibility before you apply. And you'll be asked to uh, sign to say that you have authority to uh, make this application and that it's all above board. So next part then, and I just filled this out. So I just made up this uh, Willow Arts Collective. So you need to have name of your group or if it's you. So it can just be Lucina Russell. That's fine as well. Um, and you need to choose your municipal district. Um, and that's linked to how the grants are assessed. So you need to have that when you apply. And you can see I've just filled out here, I've just made up this group. So I've, I've, I'm the chair chairperson uh, and I've given our, us a secretary as well and treasurer. But equally, if that was just me, so I'm just Lucina Russell, individual artist, just put down your own name uh, and that's fine. But you'll see here under treasurer, we have no treasurer. So I've just put in NA and under the phone number put in zero because they are fields you have to fill in. So if there's something and they're all highlighted in yellow on the form. So if something is in yellow, you have to fill it in. So if it doesn't apply to you, just put in a no or a zero. Um, and then a brief description of your project. So again, there's a word count on this. And again, this is really for the assessment panel who are going to maybe be looking at 80 applications at a time that the, at a glance, they can just get some sense of what the project is about. Can be very useful when you come back to score at the end to just remind yourself, oh yeah, that's that project. And then we have, um, a detailed proposal here of the project and again sometimes uh, I suppose when we had the paper versions and you could extend the boxes 
sometimes people could fill in two pages and it still wasn't clear exactly what the, what they were looking for. Uh, and again, it can be hard to read when you're not familiar with the project. So uh, we have set an upper limit of 150 words. And I know somebody said earlier, it can be hard to describe everything in, in that. Uh, so I, just to, to show you what I've, and again, this is just, I just made this up. Willow Arts Collective are a group of visual artists from the Cora engaging in socially engaged arts practice through visual arts media, textiles and photography. We were established in 2015. We wish to work with the ABC Women's Group to create a body of work on identity and place culminating in an exhibition of work for International Women's Day through weekly workshops. The lead artist will be Joe Brown, photographer, and Sam White, textile artist, who led the much acclaimed project FIRE with DEF Youth Services support materials attached. So we just want something that at a glance you go, okay, right, I get a good sense of that. Um, also, I would really urge, um, we have groups that we've worked with for a long period of time, and then we've hopefully lots of new applications, applicants each year, which we really, uh, you know, welcome. Um, and they're each treated equally because they're all assessed by independent panels. So it's really important, um, even if you think you're very well known in Kildare, you can assume that the person uh, or uh, panel reading it know nothing about your project. So you need to put your best foot forward as to how you present yourself. That's very important. Um, so who will benefit from the project? Um, so here we have, so we have the arts collective we've named the artists. I put myself down as project coordinator and we have somebody, uh, so we have Fran Black from the Coral Resource Centre is going to lead the ABC Women's Group. And we also have activities run for the Acorn After School project. Um, the commencement date, I know some of these might, might be a little bit tricky this year. Deadline, as I said, is the 18th of March, but really we won't make awards until April. So the project shouldn't be starting before April. We don't fund projects re retrospectively. So if they've already started, then you shouldn't really be applying for it. But if it is something, it's a, a phased project that you're doing over a number of years, you could apply for a development stage of a project. And again, some of these mightn't have an end date, um, so you could just put in till the end of the year. But ideally, all of the projects should be happening by the end of this calendar year. If they don't, um, you need to let us know. We do ask for an, an update report by Halloween. Um, and sometimes that's just to say, yes, all going well, our project is finished or else it's going to be delayed till November for whatever reason. And as I said, COVID um, circumstances uh, will be... Um, you know, we will bear that in mind as well, and we'll try to allow as much flexibility as we can on the delivery of projects. Obviously, the first thing is that people stay safe, and we absolutely wouldn't want anybody breaking any rules. That that goes without saying. So your end date. Um, so then support materials here, and you can see as this, you can see that there's only three files can be uploaded. And like I said, that really is uh, as some some of the other schemes, the Arts Act, we have limited to three. Some of the other schemes like the um, Emerging Visual Artist Bursary Award, you can upload more material. Uh, but we're just, there's so many applications for this. Like I said, we need to be mindful of our, our, our panel and what they can uh, look at. But you're, you can uh, have links to websites, Vimeo um, videos, uh, YouTube, and the first little icon there, that's just for, for files. So that can be Word documents. PDF is probably the best. Uh, and if it's PDF, it doesn't jump around. So whatever way you submit it, that's it. Uh, but like I said, clearly labeled, you know, nice project proposal, nice visuals are always good. Um, and I'm always surprised that sometimes we get um, applications from visual artists, maybe they don't have any visuals. So, um, you know, it's nice and it can really brighten up an application as well. So, uh, so there's just an example of a little piece that I uploaded there. Uh, and then to try and just name them, a title them that, they all make sense in the application. So this is the budget here. So I have just uh, made up this budget for the project that I had mentioned there. Um, so you can see I've got artist fees, materials, um, this is artist fees for the women's project and then for the after schools, and then there's some documentation. Uh, and on this, um, sorry, it'll be a little bit laborious that uh, all of these fields are um, required so you'll have to fill them in. But even if it's just a zero, you can see there the they're highlighted in orange, the one at the bottom that I didn't fill in. So just put in zero if it doesn't count or any. And that's absolutely fine. So you can see there the cost for my project here is two thousand two hundred and ten euro. And that's popped in on the following page. So um, the Willow Arts Collective is looking for eighteen hundred euro, two hundred euro from their own funds. And the Family Resource Centre are going to put in two hundred and ten euro. So that balances out my budget. So that's important that the budget must match 
uh, the total of the costs or the you know everything that's on on this page just should all add up so this is pretty important and i'm hoping i think some of the weaker applications over the years the budget was a little bit vague so i'm hoping that this will actually prompt people to maybe think a little bit uh, on, on what the project is going to cost. And I mean, you really should have a project, uh, the budget broken down like this. It's not really enough to say we want 2000 or what is it, 1800 euro for the project on the Cora. You know, we need to have a little bit of detail and even maybe more than what I have set out there. So um, quotation, so if I was going to apply for equipment or um, materials, uh, if you can, and if it's substantial, then you probably should, um, if it's over a thousand euro, we certainly need to have a quotation um, uploaded. Um, sometimes it's, I mean, this this is something for all of the community grants, so it doesn't really apply for RSAC, but just say, for example, you are, it was associated with a recording studio or an artist workshop or something like that. There might be um, something to do with, you know, a building. So we'd need to know about that. But in most cases, you're just going to mark no. And here as well, consent. Just say if there's planning permission. Again, maybe if you were going to put up a, a a recording studio out of the back of your house, for example, uh, we need to know about that too. So finally, then uh, you're asked to just type in a signature and you can see that the, it, it, it'll it'll um, sign your signature for you. And once you submit that, you get um, an email back to verify that it is you. Um, and then uh, this is just up until this stage, this is just saying I've, I've won signature. So I could go back and add other signatories or email addresses and anybody whose email address is on it, particularly for a group application, they'll just need to verify, yes, we are the applicants of this. Uh, but up until this stage, um, if there's anything that you've missed, um, this, the system will tell you uh, you need to go back and fill in something. Um, some of those mandatory fields that I mentioned, the system will prompt you to do that. So if you've left something out, so I mean, it, it won't tell you that you forgot to upload your CV, but some of those ones around the budget or maybe the um, de details about the applicant, it will prompt you. So you can save your application as you go along um, up until this point. Um, so you can go in and out. I'd suggest you go in, start an application, have a little look around, see what it is you need to go off and get. Uh, and then right up until this point, you, you can change it. Um, but then once you press, press submit, that's it. So it's gone. That's it. Um, and then, but you can, you can start a new application. It, the system will remember your profile. So if you filled in, and I didn't look at the profile today, if you filled it in, it should recognize you. But you might be doing one to apply as you. So that is, Lucina Russ is applying for me as a writer. I'm going to apply for something to publish my novel and I'm also going to be the chairperson of the Willow Art Collective um, and you can do that so but you need to have two profiles if I'm applying as an individual and as as part of a project there are two separate profiles and two separate applications um, so that is it and the main thing then is good luck with your application so look I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to go I think we have a lot of other questions here now Somebody's asking, is there a maximum number of items or pages for CVs allowed to be submitted in one single file? No, there isn't, uh, but I'd say um, include what's relevant to your application. So if you've been working for 20 years as a painter, for example, I don't know if you need to be putting in things that you did 20 years ago, unless there's some relevance to your application. So if you're going to revisit something that you did before and you feel it's relevant, put it in but i say don't put kitchen sink in you know you're trying to be fairly bespoke about and quite specific about what you're looking for funding for and sometimes we get so much information that's actually hard to see what the you have a good idea of what they're at roughly but it's quite hard to know exactly what it is they're looking for so um i say just be a little bit discreet on what it is you submit um, somebody asked if you have support in kind does that value yes you can include that and support and i mean i know that our, our funding is pretty is, is quite modest so absolutely you can do that um so does it value you can put it in the budget it's just the budget needs to balance so you know if you have it in as uh, the income and expenditure needs to balance that's the main thing um and i mean it could be the case if you're getting free rehearsal space from an organization and you're an individual artist it might be nice to have the arts organization to say um, I support this application by whoever, and we're offering weekly 
rehearsal spaces or whatever and access to our recording studio so that that could help to support it uh, the application as well um somebody is asking about municipal districts where you have artists from different areas working together on a project how do you choose which you submit under and um, i think i'd go with the main person whoever the main applicant is so just say you have a group of 15 artists all around Kildare, uh, but one person is, you know, the person who you get the email, you're filling it out. I'd, I'd pick theirs. Now, there's a lot of them. It, it, it's really, um, and we're not, we, you know, there's no fences up around the county. And we, and we fund projects outside of the county as well, obviously, and want people to come in. Uh, but it's really down to uh, the assess, or sorry, the um, signing off by council. So that's really what the municipal district about. So I'd say the main applicant. Um, and somebody's asked here, if your project involves collaborating with an artist from another district who is applying for, from her county council for co-funding, do I need to apply as a group rather than an individual? Um, I'd say, so I'm going to just say that again, if your project involves collaborating with an artist from another district, and that's another county council, do I need to apply as a group rather than an individual? I'd say no, I'd say apply as an individual and name it to say, on the budget to say, or, and your description to say I'm collaborating with whoever it is and they are making an application to whatever local authority for I'd say it should be if there's two artists of equal weight doing something similar uh, so we'll just say your total budget cost is 4,000 euro they should probably be applying for 2,000 euro from their local authority uh, and that there's some some of the documentation submitted would um, back that up I hope that answers your question um okay and somebody asked if you make a mistake can you redo it uh not if you've submitted it but i think there's enough prompts within the uh, like i said if you forgot to upload something you will be prompted that you did um but i think you've got enough opportunity and it's actually quite easy to navigate around as well so on, on until you press submit like I, I wouldn't suggest doing it all in one go like i said you can set up your application, uh, save it in draft. And I can see already quite a number of people have gone in to have, have a look around and just to test it out. So you can fill it out ABC, you know, you can do, but I'd say don't don't submit it like that, you know. Um, but yeah, you, until you press the final go button, you, you can change it as many times as you like. Usually what happens with the scripts, for, so that's for the short grass film for the 12 and a half thousand euro award, uh, it's often there's a, an independent panel and there, there are filmmakers who who uh, we usually have producer and, and filmmakers who look at those and it comes down to the budget and if the script is too long and they look at the budget and think right well it's because people need to get paid that's the other thing with the film commission everybody all of the creative team uh, the actors uh, the crew they all need to be paid so if it just looks like it's not going to be feasible to do it within the budget that could stand against it, but there is no maximum. Um, and I mean, it doesn't have to be a short film. We, we have had submissions for full length films, but we've only funded short films so far. Like I said, the, the, bu the budget is small for, for, for filming. Okay, so an emerging artist. Um, I think it's up to you uh, to decide about, and I did say it was open, but how you define someone as artist and someone that was returning to being professional artist of many years as working as a carer. Um, I think it's up to you to outline that in the application. Um, and like I said, we're deliberately vague because if you put too many rules in it, then it instantly excludes somebody. Um, so I feel you, you'd need to articulate that in your application. If that is referring to Riverbank Art Centre again, there is only one award. So if you don't get that award as an emerging artist, um, then you know that then you don't get it. And sometimes they go back to people. You know, if, if there's uh, other proposals that are interesting, they could go back maybe again and look at an exhibition another time. But I think maybe to not limit your options, I would look at the. Um, Arts Act grant as well and maybe to look for some development funding as well particularly if you're returning to uh, to be a professional artist after a number of years that maybe just um, a broader application but I say maybe put in both so put in uh, for the emerging artist and for an Arts Act grant or some of the other schemes as well could be interesting to look at the mentoring award as well um, We've got lots of fantastic artists and creatives living in the county and uh, the standard is always really high. Um, 
but uh, I think there's some really good opportunities there. <clears throat> I mean, the total pot of funding, I'm not too sure what the total awards are, but there is significant funding and opportunities there. Um, so I hope that that was useful for you and that hopefully you have some new um, ideas um, and that it's not too daunting as well. Like I said, the online system, I hope that wasn't putting anybody off uh, like really in the last two years, we just didn't have the capacity to have anything other than the paper system. Um, so thankfully we're saving a few rainforests this year. Uh, and like once you save your profile, you'll be able to go in again. So next year, if you want to apply, or if there's other schemes like the festival grants, or the community grants, the system will recognize your profile and your history will be there. So your applications from this year will be there as well. So it'll be like a little archive of what you've done once you keep an eye on them all your log on details. So I'm going to leave it at that, everybody. So thank you very much. We've had really good attendance today. Um, so I hope I've answered all your questions as best I can. Uh, if not, you can contact us separately. Um, but like I said, really just maybe before you contact us, if you just go through the website yourself and have a look because all of the eligibility is there uh, and the criteria and, and what the scheme sets out for what the ambition of it is, is there. So hopefully you should have enough information um, with what we've set out. Okay, so thanks everybody and good luck with your applications. Hope everybody is keeping safe and well. Mm -hmm.